It's a, a family festival, you know, a family festival. And of course, uh, somebody's asked me, how is it, what makes it a family festival? And I told them, of course, you get children's portions of drugs. <laughs> uh, it's a young people's festival, and I'm obviously not, don't really qualify that anymore. So, but here I am, nonetheless. Uh, one of the things that I learn, and I, I strike me about young people, is how they breeze through issues that to me, when I was young, were very contentious. They just take things as very much for granted. There's Andy Murray, uh, a bit of a hero of mine, no doubt a hero to many of us, yes? Yes! Yes! Well, Andy Murray took on a female coach. He took on a woman to tell him what to do and to boss him around. I think this is a wonderful, de uh, a wonderful development. And it started me thinking um, about the women that I grew up with. The girls I went to school with have led entirely predictable lives. As workers, mothers, lovers, carers, strong suburban wives, holding down careers and husbands, cooing over cots, and sailing to Montego Bay in 20 foot long yachts. Predictable, predictable, studying, striving, nurses in Dalmellington, accountants in Bahrain, Shacking up with sexy thugs in slutty social diving. Or marrying the second richest matador in Spain. It was only to be expected then, the way that girls were made. Rugrat rattled drudges with a first class PhD. It's obvious if your name's Adele, right? You move to Adelaide. Managing ubiquitous chips. Surviving in Dundee. I blame the education system. Rigorous and cold. We didn't have funky, inspiring teachers. They hadn't been invented then. In grim and silent classrooms, girls did what they were told by cruel, mustachioed, twisted brutes. I don't remember the men. And the lesson wrote learned into them, they followed to the letter. If you think you can do it, then do it soon, before someone else does it better. And when 16 mutated them from stick insect to stunning, they shook the world with beauty, chaos, strategy, and cunning. One spent years matching rugger buggers pint for pint in lager, then somehow snagged the gig as personal assistant to Mick Jagger. At the age of 27, she realized she'd never drive through Airdrie in a Skoda with the wet snow in her hair. So was it Kate Bush, Debbie Harry, who fired their female flair? Or teachers like Mrs. Medusa, who had snakes instead of hair? And a calcifying stone contempt for those and such as those who think all the freedom that women need is a choice of music and clothes. But not all the girls embarked upon the straight road to success. Some met blokes who every aspect of their person did suppress. Well, two set up a vegetarian McClammy farm in a crofter's buyout trust for a life of goats and muesli and same-sex civil sapphic lust. And as lads, while all the females hoovered up the proper jobs, well, a gap decade of self-expression freed our inner slobs. While the workforces of industry jumped through our classmates' hoops, we read Marx, inhaled our weights in beer, and played in tuneless groups. A rap band came to Glasgow. This wasn't in the plans. The drummer got lifted and convicted for groping schoolgirl fans. Can anyone tell me who this was? End ups. And who was it deemed that Scottish justice should get all harsh on his ass? The sheriff who found him guilty? Yes, one of the girls from my class. Did I ever go out with one of these furies? The answer, predictably, no. I saved myself for predictable girls from a couple of years below. More tolerant of the sensitive male, his inner and his outer child, until, predictably, they grew up just as ferocious and wild. And I sit down and I think of them, of all that was never to be, and I raise a glass to the girls from my class, who never thought much of me. Thank you.